Hello and welcome back to another D3D12 video here on the Ludwig Fusel channel. Now in today's video we're going to continue on filling out all of the rest of our uh, pipeline state descriptor here so that we are ready to compile our pipeline state into uh, actual binary blob. Now uh, I've already noticed a few mistakes that I have made, for example here for the pixel shader we still have the vertex shader in here. Um, that's something that we need to fix, right? Yes, a pixel shader and that's it. And we also have, I've also forget one thing that I've uh, provided in here that I also need to fix, but I will, I hope I will, uh, rec I will uh, remember to do it. All right, but without talking any further, let's get started into uh, talking about the output merger. Now the output merger, just to quickly revisit again, it is responsible for taking the pixels that have been uh, created by the rasterizer and processed by the pixel shader to um, take these pixels and merge them onto one or multiple render targets. Basically to merge them to the output of our render pipeline in a controlled and configurable way. Now, how do we do that? Well, it's actually quite simple. We specify how it works. The first thing that we need to specify is how many render targets are attached to my uh, pipeline state, to my output merger. Now, how many render targets do we have? We have one because we want to draw to the screen. You might think, why would you want to have multiple render targets? Well, there's something called deferred rendering where you're basically not writing out color values, but kind of like properties of materials and kind of like environment properties. And if you're doing it like that, then you uh, need multiple render targets to encode all of this data. That's advanced rendering that we're probably going to talk about at some point if I uh, getting the video series as far. But for now, we're going to put number of render targets to one to indicate that we are just using one render target. Now, let's talk about the render targets in uh, detail. We have something called the RTV formats. And since this is plural, this actually means that this is more. So actually, you can see it's an array of i, f8 values. Since we have specified that we just have one render target, we just need to specify the first value in here. And what we need to do is we need to provide a DXGI format. So unknown is kind of like the, uh, it's not yours, but we need a proper format. What format do we need? Well, we need the format that our uh, render target is um, using. In this case, it is a DXGI format RGBA um, un, uh, norm, uh, unorm. Unsigned, normalized. Um, this is inside the window, so how we created our swap chain, it is this basically a value that we need to reuse to basically tell it this is what you need to expect. Now the next thing that we specify is the DSV format. The DSV format is the format of the depth buffer and stencil buffer. And since we are not using that feature currently, we're going to set it to unknown to indicate we don't use it. The next thing that we need to specify is the, uh, I forgot how it's been called, primitive topology. Now the primitive topology, we have already set it that at the input assembler level. However, it's not enough to only set it at the input assembler level because since there's a geometry shader and maybe a uh, tessellation in between, uh, it is possible that after the um, flow to the pipeline and after the raster riser or uh, kind of like before the raster riser, the uh, format has changed. Now this is actually something that's uh, required by the raster riser. So this is also something that I forgot. This is uh, requires to be here. So rasterizer is configured with triangle. I forgot this as well. Now let's talk about the uh, the input into the the blending system. Now this is kind of like the output of the output merger, the output of the blending operations. And now I also want to talk about the input to blending. So how do uh, we input blending? Well, uh, we input blending by modifying values. So the pixel shader gives us pixels and we modify them so that we can merge them. Because actually merging to the target is a replacing operation. We are taking the current value that's been written on the, on the render target and we are replacing it with a new value. And that is maybe at some point not what we need. However, um, it is always like that. On like GPU side, we are reading a value, we are writing a value. Memory. We can't really just take a value and combine them. And this is why we have the blend state. And the blend state is describing how we combine color values together. Now the blend state in general has uh, three members, alpha to coverage enable, this is something that's uh, used on multi-sample anti-aliasing, we don't need that, so let's put it to false, we don't use it, and we have independent blend enable. Now independent blend means um, that you are blending um, for all render targets the same way. 
normally it is uh, done like that. If you have three render targets, you need to fill out three blend states. And if you have uh, one render target, you need to fill out one blend state. And if you enable independent blend, then it basically means no matter how many render targets you have, it's always going to use the first blend description. Speaking about the blend description here, it is uh, built on here in the render target. This is an array out of eight blend descriptors. And we're going to just fill out the first one. Now, what kind of struct is that? It is a render target blend state. Now, this is actually the state that's that's relevant. And I am going to take out all of the values so that we can get to know them and fill them in one value at a time. So let me quickly remove all the cluttering. And then after a few seconds, steal my head of that I forgot that one as always then fill them in all right so let's talk about what these blend states do now first thing that you can do is you can enable and disable blend since we are not going to use blend we're going to put it for to disabled first uh, if we are putting this to disabled actually as far as I know all other values are not relevant however I want to go into that and still explain you how they work next thing that we need to do is we need to define if we want to do logical blending if we are doing logical blending we need to define the logic op if we are not using logical blending we need to define all of the blending in between logical blending is actually quite uh, simple it is a logic operation between source and destination source is uh, the value that is flowing out of the rendering pipeline and destination is the value that's already on the render target. We have many options of doing that. You can do a end operation to logical end them together, uh, end inverted, end reverse, clear, copy, copy inverted, equiv, invert, and many, many things. And is there, there should be also a a few more of these there there you go there are all of them like x or or no and there's also no op which means no operation which indicates that we are not using logical blending at all and no op basically means this is the kind of like no op pipeline do nothing now um what do we need if we are specifying normal blending so no logic op well if we are not using logical operation we need to fill out two of these three member groups one group is for the color value so rgba and the other group here is for the alpha value so just a alpha component and color components they are blended individual and can be configured individual now blending works in the following way first source is modified simultaneously destination is modified and then they are blended together with an operation so we have source and destination source being the pixel coming from the pipeline and destination the pixel coming to the render target they are um, scaled rescaled multiplied uh, with a certain value or a certain dynamic value or constant value uh, depending on the rule that we specify here and then they are combined together using the operation and then they are written to the render target now, what are these operations that are available? Well, there is, uh, for example, a blending by the alpha factor, by a fixed or by a dynamic, not fixed, by a, by kind of like the alpha, come on, the alpha factor, uh, blending by a dynamic factor, destination alpha, destination color. Uh, then we have many, many inverted things. And you also have, I hate that they are kind of like trying to sell me something uh, because actually the struct here, uh, or this enum here has many more, more values available. There is also like a blend one, which is basically taking everything, or there is also a blend uh, zero, which means take nothing. And since we are not using that, I'm going to put this to zero, which basically means take in source, take in destination, and make it zero. And then what we need is a blend operation. There are multiple operations. There's like an operation um, add, max, min, subtract, and reverse subtract. Um, yeah, I'm a bit, uh, a bit bad today. And in general, what you do is you use like add to add the values together. Now, it really doesn't matter what I'm writing in here because we have blending disabled. And if we have blending disabled, these states are all like kind of like not relevant. However, if I would enable blending, it would no longer work. But this is a topic for the next video where we're going to play around with these, these members and see what they do. Now the next member that's relevant is the render target write mask. Uh, the render target write mask is um, actually defined by uh, macros. Uh, D3D12 render 
render target uh target right uh i always love that they are not properly documented um but if i go in here in the documentation we're gonna find uh, a bit of an information on what we do yeah color right enable enumeration is what we need all right so what we want to do is we want to set the render target right mask to all this in general basically just specifies how it works so in general what it's doing here it is basically taking source and destination applying it to the certain values then they are operating them together by the blend operation and then they are written according to that mask in this case i say all but you can also say like only red green or blue but in this case the most basic one is all in general they are all not used currently because we are using uh, normal blending all right so the next thing that we need to specify is the def stencil state the def stencil state is similar to the blend state but for the def stencil and since it's the def stencil you can see it's uh, not using an array it's directly here now um, the first thing that we need to specify is the depth the depth um, buffering first of all we need to specify it if it's enabled in this case again we are not going to use it so we're going to put enable to false and then we need to specify uh, it it's specified by a um, depth function and a depth right mask these are the three for depth buffering right mask is all or zero in this case we don't want to use it so we're going to set it to zero we are not going to write to the depth values and the next thing is the depth function so how do com do they compare in this case i'm going to say always which is going to indi which these two values would indicate is don't modify depth buffering but always pass the color values but we're going to talk about these um in the future as well but this is kind of like no op depth buffering even though we are not going to use it at all the next thing that we uh, need to uh, specify is stenciling. You um, can enable stenciling by setting stencil enable to true or false. And then you need to define the uh, stencil read and the stencil write mask. So read and write. This is basically indicating how the, uh, a certain stencil is read and written. And I think these are U and A's. In this case, I'm going to put them to zero. It's probably also like color, write and read. I know there's probably also some stuff that's an that's enabled for that. However, um, these ones are complicated and I don't use. I haven't used them actually yet. I know use cases for them, but I haven't used them actually in own code at all. Now, the next thing that you need to specify is after you have this read and write mask, you need to actually specify how to operate on dev stenciling. The dev stencil operation is dependent for the front and back faces. The front face and back face would be also a thing. And you can actually see that there are multiple of these. You can see that there is um, a, a stencil function. This is kind of like how the stencil shall operate. And then there is a depth fail operation. So if the depth and the stencil fails or just depth, depth uh, buffering fails, then you have like depth stencil fail operation and you have stencil pass operations. So in general, the operation is kind of like how it's comparing stuff. Uh, always is kind of like the no op operation. And then you have an operation uh, of what you want to do. And in this case, the operation is keep, which basically means keep as is. Now, again, this is advanced stuff. You don't really need to understand how they work. I just want to put them in into a no-op chain. Why do I do it? You could tell me that it's totally stupid to do it, but the structs on Diretix 12 are sometimes uh, a bit bitchy. So uh, I always uh, put them in there. And later on, you're also going to have a pipeline. You're never going to specify the mon uh, modular or manual like that. You're going to have a proper pipeline that's deserializing, serializing their stuff, defining them in a certain way, pre-processing them, like from loading from JSON if you are on like editor development stuff and from binary if you are at runtime. So it really doesn't matter. And it's just here to, to enumerate them. Now there are only two things missing, um, the, the sample mask and sample desk. Uh, the sample mask indicates um, how to kind of like uh, read from the output of the uh, of the um, 
na, auf die, auf die, auf die Pixel Shader. So the Pixel Shader output comes, uh, goes through output merging and then goes through the sample mask or first through the sample mask and then through output merging. It really doesn't matter, but the, the mask in this case specifies everything to FF, which basically has color channels for each value. So R, G, B, and A. Everything to F means write everything. Next thing that we need to specify is the sample description for uh, multi-sample anti-aliasing. And this is also used with multi-sample anti-aliasing there. Uh, you have a count that's going to be always one since we're not going to be using it and the quality that's zero. Again, same story. One iteration is going to be used for multi-sample anti-aliasing with a quality of zero, which means use multi-anti-aliasing pipeline without anti-aliasing because you need to specify it like that, which basically means no multi-sample anti-aliasing. It's a pipeline, so it's kind of like seen as a part that's definitely in there. And uh, if we are putting it to one and zero, we basically indicate, yeah, the part might be there, the, the GPU might be available of doing it, but we tell it to do one iteration of zero quality, which basically means that it shall do nothing. And how the vendor is doing it, if it's disabling the part, or if the part is still like doing a no op operation, it, it really depends on how the, the hardware is designed and how the software on the GPU and on the driver and everything gets together. But that's also not something that's really interesting for us. What's interesting for us is now to take that fully filled out struct and um, compile it. So how do we compile it? Well, we compile it to a certain object. We compile it to a um, ID 3D12 pipeline state. That's what we want to do it. And this is actually a pipeline state object. So it's a PSO. That's kind of like the shorthand for that. And then we can go to our context, go to our um, device, with get device and then with the device we can say create a graphics pipeline state uh, put in the pointer in here and put in iid ppv args to our newly crafted pso so there we go and now everything should work and we should have a correctly compiled pipeline state now if we press a five and we can inspect it and see how it goes. All right, we hit the breakpoint. We don't get any error message. And if I take a look at it, the PSO in here actually has a valid pointer. And this means that the pipeline state is uh, correctly compiled and ready to be drawn with. However, we are not doing drawing. If I continue on, you can see uh, already down there. No pipeline state has been set in this command list. The runtime will use a uh, default no op pipeline state, whatever. So in general, right, the pipeline state is ready, but it's not used yet. Uh, we could go into using it, but there's actually a bit more involved than just using it, right? If I would, would show this to you, input assembler is bound, and I always do it like that. So if I would bound my pipeline state object on the comment list, so comment list, set graphics uh set, pi set, set pipeline state not graphics just set pipeline state and i would set my pso would still not really do something right now i've described my pso now it's bound at runtime but it's not doing it because there's no root signature set on the comment list but even that root signature is not doing it right if i would add the root signature set graphics uh, root signature and i would plug in my root signature now we would have bind a pipeline state we would have bind a root signature they are both ready to use then we are binding our input assembler and up here already our output merger and if i run that like that you would think that we can render but it's actually not the case we can't render we will not now no longer get any issues down here and now there would be the story where you are sitting here for, for your computer and you would say i've made everything correct and it's not rendering you made everything correct but you have not made everything that you need but that's what we're going to talk about in the next video so uh thank you for watching see you in the next video make sure to like and subscribe and uh have a nice day see you in the next one with a triangle bye